Well, Western Australia has tightened its travel rules for Queensland and Tasmania in a new border crackdown just in time for Christmas. People travelling from those states will now be forced into quarantine after COVID outbreaks in each state. Joining me live to discuss this is Colin de Grassa, WA Shadow Minister for Agriculture and Food. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Julie. Great to be with you. Well, first of all, what do you make of this decision? Well, it was inevitable, really. I mean, this government's had uh, had five years nearly uh, in government to address the issues in our health system, and they've abjectly failed to do that. We are seeing record ambulance ramping, uh, record cancellations of elective surgery, some 1,600, I think, in the last month. Uh, never, the, never before seen figures in, the, in that instance. We've also seen uh, our health workers burnt out, leaving, uh, leaving the work. Uh, and so our health system is fundamentally not ready for any... COVID outbreak uh, and this government hasn't done enough about it. I mean, it feels like we are a world away over here on the eastern side of the country. What is the feeling in mm. WA? How are residents right now? It's been two years that they've been cut off from the rest of the country. It has. And look, there are no doubt, again, the second Christmas uh, where family members won't be able to see each other during Christmas. And that's that's really is a terrible uh, situation. I again say that if uh, if this government had worked hard enough to manage our health system and to improve uh, those resources that are needed, then uh, we may have had that opportunity for people to see each other for Christmas. Now, my office has taken plenty of calls over the last year and uh, the year before as well from people needing to come back to Western Australia for very genuine, compassionate reasons, and yet they've just hit a brick wall when that's happened. And it's it's been quite appalling the lack of humanity in this whole uh, this whole situation. Yeah, to be honest, some of the examples have been absolutely disgusting. In terms of severe worker shortage as well, uh, again, we're experiencing that over here on the eastern side of the country. How are your major sectors coping in WA? Well, they've managed to cope, but only by working a lot harder. I think uh, in particular when you look at the tourism uh, and hospitality sectors as well as the agriculture sector, they really have had to make do with a, a very understaffed workforce. Uh, and in some cases, a uh, uh, less skilled workforce. And that's been a monumental challenge. You know, in, in agriculture, we're seeing a, a record grain harvest over here. Uh, farmers, plenty of farmers will still be working through Christmas and beyond to get that crop off because they simply haven't had the, uh, the extra workers to help them do that. Having said that, uh, our farmers are an innovative, innovative and wonderful bunch and they will do everything they can to make sure they get the, the crop off uh, and it'll, uh, it'll benefit the state's coffers, no doubt about that. They're a resilient bunch too. I know they don't like that word, but what are the farmers saying? Because I imagine it is quite bittersweet, you know, experiencing record grain crops, but at the same time having to work through short on staff. Uh, it just makes the job a whole lot harder. It does, and it's, uh, it's a real risk from a safety perspective too. You know, you've got people who are burnt out and fatigued, and that's always a challenge. Uh, they will do the job because they have to do the job. Um, they're very disappointed that, of course, the federal government did offer the Bladen Village facility in, North, in the Northern Territory to the West Australian State Government earlier in the year to uh, bring uh, some workers in and appropriately quarantine them and so on. Uh, the State Government declined to do that and uh, they declined to do that because they didn't want to pay uh, a few million dollars to quarantine those people to, to bring them into this state uh, for what is a $11 billion, $12 billion industry. The Premier says the state's, quote, careful and cautious approach to the pandemic has served WA well. What do you make of that? Look, people have been kept safe by the fact that we've closed the borders uh, and been uh, very hard on that. However, uh, again, if the health system is not in a position to be able to cope with uh, people coming in and cope with COVID infections. I mean, it can't cope with the, the normal medical emergencies we've got now. So if that health system isn't ready, then of course we're going to have to lock the borders down. And at the 11th hour now, they've, they've changed the health minister. We've got a new inexperienced health minister and just over a month before the borders do reopen in February. So it is a, a monumental challenge that this government faces to actually start to address the issues in our health system. Well, speaking of that, February 5 is the date WA is due to reopen the borders when 90% of the population is expected to be double vaccinated. Realistically, can you see that happening? Look, I think it's going to be a challenge. The 90% vaccination rate, great target, and I'm sure in some areas of Western Australia we will meet that, definitely. But there, are, there continues to be a significant uh, underperformance in vaccination rates, particularly out in regional and remote areas. 
Uh, that is a big challenge. Uh, I think we really need a, an extra strong push and resourcing out in those areas to get the message through to people that uh, what we don't want is to have states within the state and, uh, and borders imposed on communities or, or, or regions of the state uh, just because we haven't got that vaccination rate up. So I'd encourage people to get out there and get vaccinated, but I'd also equally encourage the government to make sure they are putting far more resources into that uh, than they are at the moment. Given how fluid the situation is, uh, can you see the borders reopening, though, come February 5? Look, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, I would hate to see that date change. I think uh, Western Australians have been looking forward to uh, a date for a very long time. We can see from the increase, or the sharp increase in vaccination rates once that date was announced, that many Western Australians have actually been waiting for that before they've decided to get vaccinated for whatever reason. And I think that's fair enough. People can make that choice. Um, but now that we've got a date, people are very keen to see uh, the state borders open and I think it would be a big mistake for, uh, to go backwards on that. All right, well, thank you very much for your time this afternoon, Colin de Grasse, WA Shadow Minister for Agriculture. We appreciate it. Wishing you and your family all the very best. Of course, it's Christmas week. Have a Merry Christmas. You too, Julie. Thank you. And to everyone out there, I wish you a safe and very happy Christmas with the ones that you love around you. We'll see you in the new year.